Ashes and dirt were moved around and out of the house using bundled branches and brush for centuries. Native grasses were dried and bundled together, often decoratively woven at the top or tied tightly with yarn or fabric to keep the brooms together. Southerners have used native sweet grass and other grasses for their long stalks with tasseled ends for broom bristle. The course of American broom history was altered in the late 18th century, when some say that in 1797 Levi Dickinson, a farmer from Hadley, Massachusetts, used a bundle of tasseled sorghum grass, also called broomcom, to make a broom for his wife. It is likely these early broomcom brooms were simply lashed or woven together, resulting in the fact that they often fell apart. Other experiments examples of brooms. Examples of brooms. With attaching the circular bundles of broomcom led to wooden handles. By about 1810, wooden handles with holes drilled into them were used to lash the broomcom to the handle using wooden pegs. Whether Levi Dickinson was the first American to use sorghum to make brooms is in contention. However, nearly all acknowledge that the United Society of Believers, familiarly called the Shakers, quickly moved into the broom making business about 1798 by growing broomcom and making brooms. The Shakers Watervliet, New York, community took the lead in manufacturing brooms, although nearly all the Shaker communities constructed and sold them throughout the century. The Shakers are credited with inventing the flat broom. They recorded that, Theodore Bates of Watervliet examined the circular bundled broom and determined that flat brooms would move dust and dirt more efficiently. The bundles were put into a vise, flattened, and sewn in place. The Shakers led the way in improving the broomcom broom. They appear to be the first to find that wire more effectively secured the broomcom to the wooden handle rather than tying or weaving. They developed treadle machinery to wind broomcorn around the handle while securing it tightly. They developed special vices to flatten the broom for sewing into the requisite flat shape. Still other machinery was devised to quickly separate the seeds of the broomcom from the tassel bristles. Using foot-powered machinery, the shakers could make two dozen brooms per person per day, quite a feat for the early 19th century. Today, the machinery is electrically powered. However, in even the largest American broom factory, the production of broomcom brooms is still remarkably a handcraft. One factory foreman in a large broomcom factory says he can pick up a broom and tell who amongst his staff made it because each one is made according to the skills and preferences of the maker. A single machine and operator sits at a machine and constructs a broom. The machines, and the methods, have not changed in over 40 years. The most significant development in the history of the product resulted from the North American Free Trade Agreement, NAFTA, in 1994 when tariffs were lifted from broom corn brooms imported from Mexico. Cheaper than American brooms. Labor is cheaper and broom corn is grown there in huge quantities. The Mexican-made broom importation obliterated many American broomcom manufacturers. American broomcom manufacturers pressed for more restrictive tariffs but such tariffs were overruled. Today, there are only about 15 broomcorn manufacturers left in the United States.